All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in this talk, we're going over certain decision that we made at LinkedIn to go over with um, Sonic and also how we're using it for self-healing. A little bit about me. It's low. All right. Um, I lead a network engineering on LinkedIn, and I'm in the company for past seven years. Brief description of our um, infrastructure. We have about a quarter of a million bare metal servers. We are in 20 locations globally, and we are connected to more than 4,000 networks, including the internet. Uh, our infrastructure, over year over year, we have around 34% growth. Uh, it's usually around uh, the need for more compute nodes as well as bandwidth. Uh, for every single traffic that comes into our data center, we have around 1,000 bytes generated across east to west. We have a lot of internal traffic in comparison to our external traffic. Um, application call graph is one of the examples. Kafka for logging, auditing. Hadoop and um, offline compute as well as machine learning to suggest you people you might know PYMK and those applications. Um, I have a few slides for our data center journey to create a context. We, we went through uh, different phases um, from site up to growth to innovation that changed our focus. Um, around 2010 to 2012, at the time, our biggest problem wasn't the design of the data center itself, but was simply keeping the site up. Uh, we were growing much faster than we had experience in operating the site or, or monitoring tools and visibility. So uh, operational excellence and keeping the site up was, us, was our highest priority at that time. Then moving to 2013, 2015, we were more focused on capacity uh, planning for 10x growth, uh, scaling our network, moving to active-active data center architecture. And after that, we, we were able to gain and uh, put more focus around innovation. Uh, we, we had conversation with our application folks to make sure that they are not bounded to any limitation on the infrastructure side. Just assume that you know you have unlimited amount of bandwidth or, or uh, lowest amount of latency and write your application the best way that you can do. Uh, we also spend a lot of time focusing on the um, cost and the, uh, how to scale our network and infrastructure in a more business aware sense. Um, one of the strategic shifts that we had through this journey was focusing on the software piece and owning the code instead of you know, relying on proprietary solutions. Owning the software that you know, runs on our infrastructure, such as switches, was an important step for us because we don't need to change the architecture of our network or infrastructure based on what uh, vendors provide, but we can integrate the software the way, the, the way that we want to design the infrastructure. Um, I remember around 2012, we were designing our Virginia data center, and we had a lot of back and forth. We wanted to use certain features that are available in service provider industry inside our data center. For example, we wanted to use um, BGP to, to announce access list to our top of rack switches. And those features were not available in data center at that time. So we had to go back and forth with BU and convince them from business perspective that it, make, it makes sense for us to have this feature. However, we, we, uh, not every request from customer is the same. So we didn't have much control what we are running in the network and the software side. The other thing is that when we are running a multi-vendor environment, we are limited to the common denominator across the vendors in order to be able to support the features that we want to do. So a little bit of these slides are about why it makes sense for us to have the ownership, especially ownership of the code. And the primary reason is to be able to move fast so that we can develop the features that we want in-house or tweak it the way that we want to 
use it in our infrastructure. Also, we're going to have freedom in terms of customization and independence. It gives us more leverage in choosing what vendor or what technology we want to use. Um, around 2016, we started designing our uh, Oregon data center. Uh, we call it Project Alter. Um, a typical BGP control plane based design with five stage class that I'll talk about it. It was a single SKU data center. It means that we use the exact same hardware at different tiers. And also we moved away from the chassis design to pizza box, single chipset um, platforms. Core design principle for the project was basically, you know, keep it simple, use the open solutions as much as you can. Um, design should be independent and programmable. Programmability, it means that we, we, we don't want to design every piece of network based on requirement of uh, a specific application, but we want to you know, uh, deploy the network and then program it based on the needs from the software perspective. So we don't need to rewire and change the topology every time. Our five stage class, um, we have three tiers. We have top of rack switches, which are in the middle of the rack. They connect to the servers, and then they have uplinks to leaf and spine tier, which we call a CSW and fabric switches. With this design, we can support roughly 100,000 bare metal servers with only five lookup as the maximum, which reduces the amount of latency. We were also able to use the 100 gig technology at that time. Building block for that, uh, we, we started working with the ODMs to have our custom design switch. We call it Project Falco. The first switch had a, a Tomahawk chipset 3.2 terabit per second, 32 port of 100 gig. If you want to use it for top of rack, we can configure those ports to be 10 gig and uplinks of whether you know 50 or 100. So we use the exact same switch for top of rack with 10 gig configuration, same switch for the leaf with 50 gig config and on top in the fabric as well. Uh, we decided to move away from big chassis switches because our requirement was pretty simple. We wanted basic you know, IP routing. We were not really concerned about FCOE or EVPN or MC lag or um, any complicated stuff that may lead to um, downtime and problems because it comes with the complexity of the code. So keep it as simple as possible. And we did not spend much time on NSR or ISSU in service upgrade because we had you know, enough ECMP path that you can bring a switch out of the rotation and uh, uh, do your maintenance. On the software side, we, we spend a lot of time you know, choosing different solutions in the industry, including open switch. We, Finally, you know, decided to move to Sonic. Our requirement was as simple as running BGP, routing v4 and v6. We don't want to do any overlay in the network, um, and we don't want to do any link aggregation, any MC lag. We also moved the firewall and load balancing functionalities to the code so, so that we can make the network as simple as possible as connecting a bunch of Linux servers together, which they act as a switch. So Sonic and that platform was the, uh, the, the base for the self-filling. Self-filling has multiple tiers and layers. Um, we're going to talk about the telemetry feature, Kafka, Argos, Open Fabric, and how we're using NERS for other remediation. So on top of Sonic, of course, in, at the bottom layer, we have the choice of mesh and silicon, you know, um, what we want to use. Because we are using Psi, which is OCP project, we don't need to forklift upgrade or change the code for different vendors. So on top of Sonic, we decided to uh, make it as simple as possible, remove all the unnecessary protocols, such as SNMP, Syslog, SFlow, and connect all of these devices through a Kafka pipeline. So we have a Kafka agent and the Sonic box to, to send events to the broker at a centralized location. 
This way we are able to export our telemetry data, send it to the centralized location for online and offline processing, which we can you know, do event correlation. And also we, we, we are able to record the state of the network, the BGP changes or route changes, and then we can uh, replay those events to see you know, what went wrong and um, keep track of the state of the network. A little bit about Open Fabric. The, the, the idea, this is not a complete project. It's still a work in progress. Uh, the idea here is that since this is a single SQ data center, you can use the same exact switch in different tiers. How about we, we just make this network plug and play so that we just you know, uh, insert a new switch in a new pod and then switch identifies its location automatically and it configures itself knowing the topology. For that, we need to move away from distance vector protocol, move to uh, something uh, more SPF based, which we're gonna talk about. But that was the idea of self-defined networking so that you can deploy as fast and as possible. The other component for um, self-healing is the Argos. Argos is our homegrown tool to detect any network issue and isolate that issue. Um, one of the biggest challenges that every uh, content provider and data center has that when application is suffering from performance, it's really hard to detect if the problem is from the app or host or the network side. Um, we are running Argos agents on the application nodes so that they can send probes together and understand the health of the network. We're also planning to extend this to, to the Sonic portfolio that we have and then extract it to the time series database and do analytic on top of it so that we can detect the heat maps in the network on a, on a specific fabrics. We can also detect the incidents that are related to the network and also um, send alerts related to that. Argos has two parts. Um, there's a fault detection piece which detects, you know, whenever a network is having a problem, it shows that, you know, you have a heat map, you have a problem in series of links. So this way we can understand if application is choosing a certain path is having a problem or the, the issue is related to the, to the links that the application is using. We also do SLA monitoring and we use that data for troubleshooting. But detecting the fault itself is not sufficient, obviously. We know, we know that there's a problem in the network, but the big question is how to isolate that problem and know what links and what components of the network are facing that problem. So with fault isolation, we, we basically generate enough amount of TCP and UDP traffic to be able to map all the links available in the network. These uh, switches, they do um, hashing for ECMP loads. So every TCP UDP session with different source port destination port gonna end up in a random uplink of the switch. If we spawn enough sessions, we can map the complete ECMP of the network and then we can detect what links are suffering from congestion, packet loss, or high ut utilization. The third component is NERS, a project that happened, uh, developed by our SRE team to auto-remediate um, incidents in a network. At some point, we, we were facing huge amount of alerts than operation staff that we had. So we, we realized that 80 to 90% of these events are repetitive, that they are the same kind of issues that we know how to fix them. Um, the, the only thing that we needed to do was to match those problems automatically and also take action automatically. So what NERS does is that we have a prescription of what events and what can go wrong, and then on top of it, we, we create actions of how to automatically remediate those. The other piece of um, self-healing, we talked about uh, the control plane. So, a little bit of history about why BGP is being used in data center. Well, we, we didn't have any other choice. BGP is proven to work at scale in the internet, but uh, we don't have a 
a link state protocol that can act you know, at that scale. So we had to use BGP, which every provider is using BGP. Um, the problem with BGP is that if there's a, because we are relying on ECMP and random hashing, if there's a problem in the middle of the network, you don't have visibility when you're choosing a path about that problem. For example, if there's a congestion in the link in the middle of the network, everything seems to be reachable. Routing protocols, they don't advertise the availability of link, like such as utilization. They just advertise number of ways that you can reach to the destination. So they are not traffic aware. And that could be challenged for in a data center that you're running a lot of hot links at the same time. You don't want your storage traffic to, to use the same interface that you have um, for other chatty protocols. So how to distinguish between these two? Back in the day, we GPS systems, they were all based on shortest paths. So when you wanted to go from San Francisco to San Jose, you would always end up choosing 101 as the shortest path. But these days, we have traffic information on top of the routing so that you can make better decisions of maybe 280 is a better route, even though it's longer, but you can get there faster. So one of the main um, criteria for open fabric is the how to uh, provide that traffic information to the routing system so that we can make better decisions for certain applications that are sensitive about bandwidth or latency. We don't necessarily need to extend this to every single application in our network, but the ones that they, that they have certain uh, requirement from the network. In terms of roadmap, um, we are done with the streaming telemetry part where we're still route, uh, working on the DC routing part. A um, few weeks ago, we were able to simulate open fabric on, on Crystalnet, which is, a, which is a, um, Azure product, and we were able to see significant convergence improvement from BGP with open fabric that we're gonna have a post about that. The other work that uh, we are doing with OCP is defining SI interfaces for segment routing and SRV6 so that everybody can use the same set of instruction across different vendors so that you can impose those labels from host or from the application and the network can take care of the instruction that is included in the header. And uh, lastly, the part that we need to work on is to integrating the host uh, awareness with SRV6 to the, to the Linux kernel. So the self-healing part, we started, we, we talked about the Sonic and telemetry, we talked about the Kafka, Argos for fault detection, Open Fabric for control plane and management plane, and then NERS for correlation and auto remediation. The way that we are looking at the uh, networks of today, um, there should be five layers there. There's a hardware layer that definitely a merchant silicon is there. Then we have link selection, what paths to use across ECMP bundles. Routing sits in between to detect the topology and create a network graph. And then we have a policy layer which we want to segregate it from the routing layer. BGP is purely a policy-based routing protocol. And we're hoping that uh, topology discovery and shortest link detection happen at the routing and the policy sits on top of it. On top of the hierarchy, we have the telemetry features, self-healing, machine learning, prediction engines, and so forth. Uh, one thing that we're looking ahead, there, there's a small difference between uh, other remediation, which is prescribed-based, and self-healing. We're hoping to use machine learning and some prediction to detect problems such as detecting light level changes on a transceiver and change that transceiver beforehand. Um, that requires a lot of time, uh, energy to work on the AI piece, obviously. Uh, we are hoping to open source the open fabric part as a new web scale control protocol. And we are also focusing on 12.8 terabit chipsets. That's all I have.